Hello everyone, it's Amiti Sensei. Today I'm going to use an app called Affinity Designer and show you how to create a stylish title. I'm going to place text on a color rectangle and cut out some text so that we can see the background like this. This can be done easily by anyone as long as they learn how to do it. So I hope you guys use this technique and make posters and banners. The app I'm using today, Affinity Designer, is a quite advanced app similar to Photoshop or Illustrator. It usually costs around $24, but when it's on sales, you can get it a lot cheaper. I've used this app a lot in my previous videos and I'm planning to use it more, so if you're not on a tight budget, I hope you get it too. They also have Mac versions of Affinity Designer, Affinity Publisher, and Affinity Photo. Affinity Publisher is kind of like Adobe's InDesign. I will leave a link in the description box down below. So if you're interested, please check it out from there. Today I'm using Affinity Designer to create a title design like this. I'm going to create three types of design like these, so I hope you guys try them out together with me. First, open Affinity Designer and tap the button at the top right. Then select a new canvas and select the size of the canvas there. For now, I'm going to set the canvas size for your iPad Pro 11 inch. Now you can add your photo to the canvas using your camera roll or file app and open it using slide over. You can just drag and drop a photo like this and it will automatically add a photo to your canvas. So now you can adjust the size and position of the photo. To do this, select the tool at the top of the toolbar on the left, and then adjust the size and position of the photo. In Affinity Designer, the layer panel can be found in the tool panel on the right side, so if you tap here, it shows you the layers, so you can edit and hide them here. The color panel can be found here too. Next, select the rectangle tool and add a rectangle to the canvas like this. You can do this easily just by dragging the Apple Pencil and then selecting the movement tool at the top left to move it around and adjust the size. If you want to change the color of the rectangle, you can select the color panel and choose the color you prefer even though it might be difficult to see right now. But there is a thin border around the rectangle. So I'm going to hide it by selecting this icon in the color panel. Now let's start in some text. The text icon is the second tool from the bottom in the toolbar with an A icon to select it and tap somewhere on the canvas to add it. The text here turned out to be really small, so I'll select the movement tool and adjust the size. But right now, we can't really see the text as the text layer is underneath the rectangle. The white rectangle is on the top and the text are underneath it right now. So to bring them to the top, you can hold the text layer and drag it here like this. You can change the font and size of the text as well. The font and size can be changed using the text tool with the A icon, this time on the right side, and choose the font or adjust the size here. I'll first change the font to something thicker, sans serif, which should be bold too. The reason for this is because we are going to cut out the text later, and it looks much better with text that are thick and bold. If the text are thin, you can barely see the background through it, so it kind of defies the purpose. So please choose a bold font. This time I chose this really simple and bold font, and now I'll adjust the rectangle a bit. 
When that's finished, I'm going to cut the text out, but please pay attention here. I'm going to select both the rectangle and the text at the same time, and to do that, first select the text, and then put another finger on the screen and tap the rectangle too. I'll repeat. Select the text, put your left finger on the screen, and then select the rectangle. When doing this, make sure you have the movement to select the which you've been using, because it won't work if you don't. Next, tap the three dots icon at the top left, and select the one at the bottom that says Exclusive Disjunction. As you can see, it looks like the texts are cut out. So remember to select the Exclusive Disjunction icon at the bottom of the three dots icon. Okay, that's about it for this design. Just by cutting out the text icon and showing the background, it looks pretty stylish, don't you think? Now you can change the position or rotate the background image like this and move it to wherever it's easier to see the text. You can have the text appear better by lowering the tone of the background image. I'm going to make the image a bit darker by using the adjustment panel, which is in the toolbar on the right. There's an icon with three circles there, so select it and you'll see a bunch of categories for adjustment. For instance, if you select the exposure, exposure layer will appear in the layer panel. This one right here. While the exposure layer is selected, a panel will appear at the bottom here. It's a bit complicated, so I repeat. Select the exposure layer and drag the bowl shape panel at the bottom horizontally. I think you can see that the image just got darker. You can use this to lower the exposure. There are many options for adjustment layers like curve, contrast, and blur. So you can add more and more layers to make small adjustments to the canvas. This is a bit advanced, so for now I suggest you focus on the process of cutting out the text. I'll probably make another video exploring the details of the adjustment panel. Okay, so let's move on to the next design. The second one is going to be something more masculine with the image of the bike. Affinity Designer has such great features for text adjustment and you can do kerning really easily, for example. Select the position section here and choose Tracking. As you can see, you can change the space between letters like this. The font I'm currently using is called Condense and it's a really good font for a design like this. Something bold and tall like this one really looks good after the canal because you can clearly see the background. Okay, that's all for this one. You can also change the color of the rectangle after making the design. While the rectangle is selected, use the color panel to change its color to something like a vivid red or blue, so you can play around with this and see. If you want to keep it simple, I suggest using white. The third one is going to be slightly more advanced. I want to create a postcard design. I suggest this method when you want to create something for a wedding card or a birthday card. First, select a background image and place a rectangle that's slightly smaller than the photo. A tip here to make it look good is to adjust the space at the top and the right to be exactly the same. You could use a rectangle to measure how long the spaces are and keep the margins equal. We are going to add some text now, but this time we are going to put multiple words, so a sentence. When you do this, you should change the line for each word. 
then use the arrow tool as well as the movement tool to make the text bigger and change the font. Right now I'm just writing something random and simple, but you could also write something like congratulations or you could even write something longer by combining several lines. When you're done with the text, double select them and the rectangle. Tap the three dots icon on the top left and choose invert. Then the text will be cut out and you'll see the background like this. I'm using a solely white rectangle right now, but we can lower the opacity so that we can see through it. To do that, select the layer panel and tap the three dots icon at the top. And then there's a slide for opacity where you can adjust the opacity. If you set it to around 90%, you can slightly see the background image, which looks pretty good and neat. You can leave it at 100% if you like it, and it's really up to your preferences. Finally, I want to add a handwritten message on the right side. So let's add a new layer and select the brush tool. The brush panel is on the left side, so I'll select a brush and add the handwritten signature to finish it up. Okay, that's all for this design. I think it looks like a cute postcard design. You could keep a template of this and change the background image later and play around. So I suggest making one for yourself. In this video, I cover some tips for advanced users too. But I have so many other videos using Affinity Designer, so please check them out. For example, I have tutorials on how to use the shape tools or how to create logos, and also on how to make a Christmas card, pattern design, and even maps. I use Affinity Designer in all of these videos, and I will leave the link in the description box down below, so if you're interested, please check them out. Okay, I think that's all for today. If you find this video helpful, please give a like, and just like this video, I make a lot of videos using the iPad to do something creative, so please subscribe to my channel if you haven't. Thank you for watching my video. Bye bye!